When the Spanish were exploring the high seas, particularly here in the Americas, they really were following the same patterns, right? They're looking for gold, they're looking for allegedly fountains of youth, and they're going throughout the Americas, and basically the same events are repeating themselves uh, as they progress, mainly the fact that na the native populations are getting devastated by disease and by and by war. Uh, but nevertheless, when, it, when you boil down Spanish exploration of the New World, you get a, a phenomenon known as the three G's, the gold, God, and glory. So let's break them down a little bit. What's gold? Well, first of all, gold is easy. You know, it's it's a, it's a precious metal, right? I mean, you, know, you think about it, and you know, and people basically salivate themselves, you know. So, but what? Why are we? You know, why are we focusing on gold? Well, gold, of course, for Spain. You know, obviously, all the the materials that are coming out of the New World are going to go to Spain eventually, or at least the bulk of the. the heavy bulk of it, right? But it's also gold for the people that are showing up, right? A lot of these conquistadors, a lot of these explorers are not firstborn males, right? Remember, this is the time period of primogenitor, where the firstborn male gets everything. At first, the, the eldest son, right? I have two boys, right? And if I were to live in a time period where we were practicing primogenitor, then my eldest son would get everything that my wife and I own. Right? Nowadays, we don't do that, especially here in the United States. But nevertheless, a lot of these guys that are coming over here are second, third, whatever, born sons. Right? So they're not going to get anything from their parents once they once their parents kick the bucket. So gold for themselves as well. It's one way to get wealthy. Because after all, firstborn sons, those that are going to be wealthy once their parents kick the bucket, then why are they going to go? They, you know, they got a good thing going. Second is God. Uh, and it goes back to that Reconquista. Remember, I mean, this is a religious war, and generally you're going to fight about something that's, that you're fanatical about. If you're not fanatical about it, something, and then you go and you fight a war over it, uh, that, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Right? So, uh, go, you know, so the Reconquista creates a fanaticism for Catholicism. Remember, the, the, the Protestant Reformation doesn't happen, um, you know, until the 1510s, right? So we're still in a time period where we're we're not we're we're getting close, but we're not talking about Protestantism here. So when I say Christianity, I really mean Catholicism. So it's a zeal, a Spanish zeal, not only to you know, it's basically to spread Christianity and you know, to fight the enemies of Christianity or fight any other religion that's not Christianity, that's not Catholicism. So the Spanish have a really strong desire to spread Catholicism wherever they go. Finally, glory. Glory for Spain. After all, think about it. Have you ever heard of an empire that's not glorious, that doesn't think itself glorious? Of course not. All right, I'm sure that the Romans, at one, you know, that, you know, that the majority of the existence of the empire, particularly the first 300 years, thought this was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Right. Well, so glory for Spain because you have this massive empire, right? But also glory for yourself, right? Because of the fact that you are a part of the winning team. All right. I mean, you know, I'm a college football fan, and I mean, and so do you think that you know the members of the University of Alabama? football team for the last few years uh, are feeling glorious because they're a part of the winning team? Of course they are. Compare that to some teams that go, you know, oh, and whatever, however many games. They're not going to feel very glorious, all right? So glory for oneself, uh, you know, because you're a part of the winning team, and also glory for Spain, glory for your nation because you're creating a gigantic empire. So where is this gigantic Spanish empire mainly based? Well, we're talking about the New World. And in particular, you know, it begins in the Caribbean. So whenever you th whenever you encounter the term the Spanish Caribbean, at one point it means Jamaica, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. Now you might be you might you might be surprised. Wait a minute, Jamaica? I thought that was English, and then eventually independent. Yes, you're right. But at one time, the Sp the island of Jamaica was actually a Spanish island. So just keep those things in mind when we start talking about exploring the New World, particularly by the Spanish.